So I'm here with Marcos, and what was this, this experiment we're doing? It was like, hey, instead of having pictures on, on our website, maybe we should have videos of people. Nice, nice. So, so what do you do here? I'm a designer here at the Khan Academy. Um, that actually goes two different ways. Mm -hmm. One end, I'm doing like software design, and that's kind of touching on the exercise framework that we have. Um, right now, I've been focused a lot on trying to make more interactive exercises easier to develop. Um, and there's a framework that I'm building for that that I'm open sourcing at the same time. Um, and what do you mean by more interactive exercises? So right now, a lot of our exercises are kind of present to you with a question. It's like, what is the sum of blah, blah, blah? Or yeah. what are, what's, how, complete the square. And yeah. it asks you this very simple one-step computation. Right. A lot of the stuff that I'm looking at is how to make exercises that let you follow a larger kind of narrative right. of problem solving. Um, so in that case, it'd be like, let's say you are this tall here and your shadow is this feet long. And then, you know, your friend is over, you know, maybe 35 nautical miles away, right. and his shadow is this long. Um, you know, given that, what do you expect the circumference of the Earth to be? Oh, yeah. So and so, you know, recreating, like, the greatest, like, you know, doing all the great um, scientific discoveries. But, you know, they're not very hard if you know the kind of basic concepts in there. Um, you just need someone to guide you along the way. Yeah, so yeah. A lot of what I've been thinking about is developing a framework, and actually developing the framework, not just thinking about it. Right, right. For making that happen. And your 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 background is pretty interesting. I mean, you started off at MIT, CS major. It was actually math with CS. Math so with CS. People call 18, it like right. diet six or you know. <laughs> diet six. CS. Six is co six, computer science yeah, at six MIT. Is straight up computer science. So it's kind of a oh, the mathy. Yeah. Computer science really is math. Yeah, yeah. At the end it's, of the day, and 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 then you decided that that was not enough. Well, I mean, I think I was I was pleasantly surprised with how that had gone, but um. What I was really focused on at the time was thinking about education in the context of making textbooks. Textbooks yeah. now say what you will about them, like I mean, dying out or whatever. I mean, I still believe, I still believe, but I wanted to make really good textbooks. Yeah, well, no, we we got and, textbooks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was textbooks, textbooks, and, and, and some science. Yeah. yeah, and so um, what I actually ended up doing after um, teaching like web design for about a year and a half mm -hmm. was applying to design school, mm -hmm. and the whole purpose behind that was actually to make. Um, a really awesome textbook. So, oh, so I didn't even realize this. This didn't even come out in the interview. This, <laughs> you wanted to like reinvent textbooks. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to actually make like the coolest textbook. And like in my like after like being in design mm -hmm. school and like making like handmade books, for example, I was like, yeah, four by six little book would be really sweet. And I was like really excited, jazzed about this. And um, and then you know as I started in two thousand seven to two thousand nine, you know, it's like you have the iPad, the iPhone, all these technological yeah. advances just happen while I'm in grad school. I'm like. You have to rethink this a little. So I got this design degree, but really from RISD. From RISD. That's, sorry, like, a, that's like a serious yeah. design <laughs> school. <laughs> so they I don't went, mess around there. So I did my grad program in design, and I got a lot of the basics. I you know learned all the fundamentals: typography, design, layout. I got really attuned to that, and then focused my energies again, thinking about you know like how do I create you know reusable design systems, and that ended up being my thesis was these kind how of how many like, CS majors were there. Uh, you know what? Actually, when I left, there was one and a half more. One had just one, left. One and <laughs> and so actually, it's um, it's an up and coming thing. Yeah. In, no, in I think school. more. I think that's actually a good combination. In fact, I think probably design should be a critical part of. Yeah, and more you, engineers. You, I mean, exactly. I mean, I yeah. think a lot of what I noticed, at least, was that there were a lot of there's a lot of similarity. I mean, you have like the um, Christopher Alexander design patterns mm -hmm. thinking. That systems thinking actually is like massive in graphic design. Yeah. Um, but it was also, you know, something that was huge in like, you know, the design pattern movement also in CS. So yeah. there's a lot of like um, happy medium there. And so why did you decide to come here? Or how did you how did you even find out about what we're what we're oh doing? My gosh. I saw like a yeah. lattice multiplication video. I think oh, I yes. saw it on Reddit and I was like, This is ridiculous. Yeah. And then I was like watching the video. Like, in a good or a bad way. Well, at first I saw it and I was like I have never heard of last multiplication. Like, and <laughs> I saw this. Like, I saw like this massive list of links, and I, someone yeah. had linked to it. Yeah. And I'm like, eh, I was like a little skeptical. And then, like, for some reason, I like finished watching the video. I'm like, whoa, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, I actually like this was one of our videos. Yeah, yeah it was actually, actually, yeah, it was one of your videos. Okay. And I had never. So it was, heard it was good, ridiculous. Yeah, it was a good, ridiculous. Okay, but good, I was good, like, good, at first, good, I was incredibly good. skeptical. I yeah, was just like, yeah. no, no, no. I'd done my like, you know, my little concentration education in yeah. secondary school, and I was like, I don't know. Yeah. And. But, you know, it's like you find yourself actually finishing the video, yep. and you're like, oh, like there's something here. Like, there's actually something there. I didn't actually see you guys again for another, like, year and a half. Um, I was, like, working at CMU and doing my own thing at that time. What, 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 what was your own thing? Oh, well, like, you know, I was doing, like, freelance work at the same time. I was also working with um, the HCI Institute. Human, so CMU oh, is yeah, Carnegie sorry. Mellon. Yeah, Carnegie Mellon, the Human, Human Computer Interaction Institute okay. uh, with Laura Dabish and Rob Kraut. Um, amazing group they're doing um really interesting work with 
team-based dynamics online. And 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 what and so what were, what were you doing? Um, I was actually like kind of staff designer, and then like doing some CS work on the side. So like doing a lot of refactoring of the code base and making sure that we could reproducibly perform these experiments on these you know like a couple thousand Facebook users every week. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. So we were running these like kind of like massive experiments, and so I learned even though I wasn't doing like the straight up like experimental design kind of osmosed a lot of that stuff while I was there. And, and, and then while you're, so, so I interrupted your, your story. So how did you find out about what we're doing? Or So I started seeing, I mean, I think Ben actually, Ben Kamins is really yeah. good about We have like nine people. Bens in the organization, nine you have to be very specific. <laughs> right. So Ben Kamins actually did a pretty good job of like posting on Hacker News every once in a while. And then I was like, man, like this is totally changed from the time that I saw it the first time. Like I think it had already gone through that one design iteration. I was like, oh, that's pretty interesting. And then I saw you guys were actually like, posting for jobs. Like, this is perfect. Yeah. Like, you know, like, what could be more perfect than this? Yeah. And so, like, just threw my hat in the ring and, you know, <laughs> the rest is history. And what? The rest is history. <laughs> and hopefully, well, the future, too. Yeah, yeah. And, then, <laughs> and, 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 and you know, what, what's what been, has any, has, it has you know, what's been, what were you hoping to do here? And has it been surprising? Has it been just as you expected? Or, you know, I think, so... Actually, when I first got here, I think I even wrote that in my cover letter. I was like, you know, I don't know what I will do when I get here, but I'm like really excited to do stuff here. Um, I had no idea that I'd be working on interactive exercises. I think that was like a glimmer in my eye. I thought, you know, straight out of design school, I mean straight out like, you know, a year and a half out of design school, I thought I'd probably be doing like business cards and logos and, you know, I was like, yeah. that kind of stupid stuff. Um, really, you I thought? Was, I mean, you oh, you were no, no, I mean, you're capable of, yeah, yeah, of more I, than business. Yeah, no, no, of course, I'm capable. I mean, I think that's, I was, that's where my design <laughs> skills are. <laughs> I think um, in my mind, I kind of like expected to spend like you know a couple months doing that, and I ended up just diving on in, you know, like thinking about new features, thinking about ways to make the site more friendly, and overall, I mean, like it, it was a huge like mind shift in like the term of like impact and scale, and the ability to do something really cool in education. I mean, like it was just like. We did this thing with David, one of our awesome interns, and it was just, you know, like, how can we make the streak bar more fun, you know? It's yeah. like, we played with just these very vi simple visual forms and, like, thinking, like, what happens when you lose your streak bar? Like, what does that feel like? And a lot of these are, like, very design-ish things that we were probing, but, you know, we ended up coming up with a very, and he actually deserves most of the credit, I mean, he came up with a very stunning uh, model for kind of making that a more interesting and a more appropriate way of engaging and measuring our um, proficiency. So they're like, like deep design questions you can actually measure. Like, yeah, it, yeah, it exactly. worked. It, like, exactly. You know, like, does it feel better to, you know, like, drop down to something, like, to drop down to some arbitrary amount and start over again? Does it feel better to drop to a percentage which represents our actual belief in how far you're doing? You know, which of these movements... Or even how do we even yeah, measure yeah. our actual belief in how it, you're doing? Exactly. And a lot of that, you know, I mean, we, we were questions of would it feel better if, as you're gaining proficiency you know, you have a kind of like a moving indicator, something that kind of like moves along and animates. And it was born out of these like kind of very playful ideas. And it actually ended up evolving into something that was very more, much more rigorous than kind of like the jewel deal, like one back and forth that we were having initially right. when we were sketching it out. All right. So, all right. And where do you hope, where do you hope this goes? Uh, well, you know, I mean, I think recently I've been spending a lot of time thinking about this kind of, these interactive exercises and, I actually feel like I'm going closer to my original idea for this textbook. Um, I mean, it sounds, it sounds kind of silly, but it feels like what I'm doing and the work that I'm working on gets me closer to designing these portable textbooks, which now I mean portable because we have like phones, you know, and yeah. iPads and whatnot, but things that are engaging, that are lightweight, and that let you kind of dive in at any level, um, just kind of at your or own maybe pace. do things that textbooks couldn't do. Well, I mean, I think textbooks are capable of a lot. Yeah. I'll, I'll be I'll be honest. You know, yeah. like maybe we disagree. But, <laughs> no, I mean, no, no. I do think. I mean, I, I, look, I, I want to get I, a lot of textbooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I firmly believe in the yeah. power of the textbook, but yeah. I think for the things that, for the kind of reactive exercises that we can pull off, and for the ability to ask questions that are experimentally, you know, you can, you can actually place a little experimental test bed yeah. in an, one of these exercises. And I think that's powerful. I mean, I think yeah. that's huge, right? Like being able to see, like, well, you know, that I got the answer. What happens if I had done this? You yeah. know, and seeing that there's an exercise that is able to adapt to that way of thinking. Right. I think right. that's huge. And right. like, if and that would have been hard with a traditional tech. With a tech oh yeah, yeah, totally. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. you know, you end up having to build up all of this, like, you know, scaffolding basically in right. paper. Which I mean, again, totally fine, right? But yeah. it's the time that you can lose to, you know, being unable to explore and play with 
tweaking values. I mean, I think that's awesome. Very cool. So, 